Hey, you're here with Half Chrome. Thanks for joining us. Today we're going to talk about the new and exciting drone that everybody's talking about lately. It's the DJI Spark. <laughs> Now you might be wondering how I got my hands on this. Well, it turns out I don't actually have a DJI Spark, obviously. But what I do have is a 3D mock-up. How did I create this? Well, I took a look at the leaked images and I just made a CAD model based off it. Had my buddy John 3D print it and this is what we got. Life-size to scale, it's not off by more than a fraction of an inch. So it really helps us talk about the features of this drone. Okay, first up, let's talk about the size of this drone. It's going to come in at about two-thirds the size of the Mavic in every direction. Now, that may just put it under the weight limit for the FAA to require registration. Now, not sure that's going to help sales that much, but it's going to make a lot more people legal because we think this is going to be a very popular drone. So how big is this drone? Let's give it some other things for comparison. First up, a tablet. This drone is smaller than a standard iPad. As you can see, it fits in there. iPad, pretty portable. You can take it pretty much anywhere. This drone you will be able to too, despite the fact it doesn't look like it's gonna have folding arms. Okay, how about we compare it to a couple other drones? In this case, the JJRC Selfie Drone. As you can see, the bodies are about the same size. This one's a lot thinner. It's just a little toy, really. And obviously, the much larger Phantom Drone here. Let's talk about the sensors that are on the front of this drone first. Right here, in the latest leaked photos, there seem to be some sensors, the behind tinted glass. Now what does that mean? It means they're going to be infrared sensors. We're almost positive. Just like they first launched on the sides of the Phantom 4 Pro, we think for the first time DJI is going to put them on the front. Now why would they do that instead of the stereoscopic cameras like they have on the Mavic? Well, two reasons. One is to save costs on cameras. And the second reason, I believe, is to save a lot of processing. Rather than having to process two images, figure out where everything is, a lot simpler and easier just to get distances from these infrared sensors. Okay, so let's talk about the camera on this drone. A lot of talk initially about this having two cameras. Now why they would put two small cameras right next to each other is beyond me. It doesn't really make any sense. So that's not what they're doing. Turns out what I believe they're doing in that little oval-shaped area is they're putting yet another infrared sensor. Now why would they do that? They already have at least one, probably three or four sensors on the front of this drone to cover the space in front of it. Well, we think it's because they want you to fly this drone fast. And when you're pitched forward like this, you need the gimbal's gonna be pitched up. And you might need some extra sensing capability to follow along with whatever angle, whatever pitch angle the drone has. So we think it's another obstacle avoidance sensor. Now you could also use that to speed up the autofocus process. We've seen that on some cell phone cameras, particularly from LG, HTC, and many others, but we don't think that's really what this is for. We think this sensor is gonna be there for additional forward obstacle avoidance. Okay, let's talk about the gimbal now. The Phantoms, the Mavics, and every drone the DJI's let out before it have had a three axis gimbal. So you can see they can all do pitch, they can all do yaw, and they can all do roll as well. Mavic has that also. So this appears to be a two-axis gimbal, a real change for DJI. Now why have they gotten away with from what appears to be the yaw axis seem to be removed? Looks like they have still have roll and pitch. Well, really drones are pretty stable in yaw. And this may not be obviously the top tier uh, videography drone, that uh, you're trying to get with a P4 Pro and Spire and up from there. It's uh, more of a hobbyist drone, but you can still get really stable images from this. Another feature we think this gimbal is going to have is the ability to completely turn the camera backwards or at least looking up into the body of the drone. They're going to be able to stow this camera to protect the lenses. So unlike other drones from DJI and pretty much every other drone that leaves the camera exposed like this and you need to add a little lens cap or aftermarket lens cap in our case, this drone's going to stow the lens away. Probably going to do that for landing, but with that forward obstacle avoidance, how cool would it be if this drone, before it crashes, and hopefully it won't crash, but just in case maybe you're in sport mode for example, that it actually stows that gimbal and protects the most sensitive part of the drone if it thinks the drone is in danger. Maybe that'd be a pretty cool feature. 
Let's move on to the bottom of the drone. So just like the Mavic before it, it's going to have a couple of these sonar sensors and a camera. Only one camera, unlike some of the other DJI products that have two, like the Mavic here. What else does it have though? It's got four pads. Can't see them in the 3D print, but you'll be able to see them in the images on our website and in this video. What are those pads for? They're for a docking station. You're going to be able to put this drone down to charge it. It's going to be really nice not to have to pull out wires, pull out a charger, and plug it in. You're going to be able to just set this down on a pad, and that's pretty cool. That may not come with the drone, but it'd be a really nice add-on feature, and it shouldn't be very expensive. What else could we do with those charging pads? Well, we could have a portable charging case. This case could have its own battery, maybe capable of charging the drone two or three times, and all you do is open it up, take out the DJI Spark, throw it on top, maybe you're in a grassy area or uneven, you can put this down and take a launch right from the case itself. So, pretty cool, we think this will be an optional accessory. Won't be cheap if it's got batteries in it, so maybe one to two hundred dollars but really nice. I think they're gonna be targeting getting this thing on the go, make it easy to fly on the go and easy to launch quickly. We think one of the key features that DJI is gonna be marketing with the DJI Spark is going to be speed to get in the air. Now, let's talk about the Phantom, for example. Gotta take it out. Gotta snap on or screw on some props. Gotta take off a gimbal guard. Gotta plug in the phone. That's another wire, et cetera, et cetera. Or even with the Mavic, you gotta set up your phone in the controller if you wanna use it. You gotta unfold the arms. The idea that DJI has is you're gonna be able to take it out, throw it on top, pull out your phone, and be launched. And we think less than 30 seconds. How cool would that be? Okay, let's talk about the frame of the Spark. It looks to be a single unibody style construction, super solid frame. Now that is in contrast to the Phantom here. All Phantoms are similar where they have a two-piece plastic shell that's hollow on the inside. Also very different than the Mavic with its folding arms. Now what are they going for here? We think durability and weight and cost. Now, why so durable? Well, obviously it's gonna handle some abuse, maybe some crashes if you're racing this around with your friends. Okay, now that we've talked about all the features we think this drone is gonna have, let's talk about what this drone actually is. First up, is it a racer? A lot of people have been calling it that. Now this is a racing drone here. Very common style construction. It's got a up-tilted camera. It's got a carbon fiber frame. It's built for speed. How does it compare to this guy? Well, they both have very solid frames, nice brushless motors. Now what no racing drone has that I'm aware of is forward obstacle avoidance. So you may actually be more comfortable racing with the DJI Spark than you would be otherwise with a drone like this. So you might say, what about the cost of the Spark? Am I gonna be comfortable flying this around? Well, this drone may not come cheap. We're anticipating somewhere in the five to $600 range, but these racing drones don't come cheap either. There's a lot of cost in building and maintaining them. Now this drone has the forward obstacle avoidance. It might actually be a lot safer racing this around than a standard racing drone. Next question is, is it a selfie drone? Here you can see this selfie drone here. It's about the same size if you don't account for the arms of this drone, and it's maybe about half the thickness. So you aren't gonna be putting this in your pocket like you will be with the selfie drone. So is it a selfie drone? Well, really, what is a selfie drone? A selfie drone is a, design, is a drone specifically to fit in your pocket. That seems to be basically the definition. And this isn't gonna meet that. Instead, I think DJI is looking for a super portable drone, similar to the Mavic, but quicker to launch, super strong, raceable, and with some unique features that we haven't seen on DJI drones before. Thanks for watching. Come visit us for a full review and all the images and a 3D CAD model of this drone, which is all for free at halfchrome.com.